Mehta for being here. Let me say, soyez le bienvenu, Nihar Mehta. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I have to, 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 to transmit a, a, a great hug and a big thanks to Juliana Lazan, yes. who is uh, uh, Namaste India Festival so, so many years uh -huh. in Romania. And it, it's a beautiful, beautiful job here in order so, yeah. to. to to let us know the, the in the Western society what are the, the root values of, of the India, profound India and Indian classical music. Nihar Mehta, you are one of the uh, most Im important uh, uh, tabla players working to uh, explore in, uh, the beautiful Indian music and to present it in uh, Western societies. Uh, you uh, live from uh, some, some years in... Yeah, in it's about 15, 15 years 15 now. years. Yeah. Well, th this is uh, n quite an, an important uh, and this, this destiny movement uh, <laughs> yeah. um, to, to come in and to, to live in India. Uh, we've talked before uh, the record that India, it's... Uh, an amazing country and uh, okay and you speak so many languages <laughs> <laughs> i try to speak yeah. five five languages five languages moment, yeah. yes and um, you uh, your art it's remarkable you you uh, uh, have a musical dialogue with many remarkable indian classical musical music artists mm -hmm. and also in uh, in the indian media you are well known uh, so, uh, shall we start from a little bit from your history, your way, coming to uh, Tabla? I know it's a family, family transmission. Mm -hmm. Your family is renowned. It's a great Indian family of philosophers and musicians. Well, uh, I was very lucky to be born in a very elite family of India. Yeah. <clears throat> so my grandfather paternal side was mostly into philosophy and art and culture. And on my grandmother's side, they were very aristocratic family of the British Raj during the British period. And 
my grandmother's father or grandfather was one of the first to establish a textile mill in India. So the machines came from United Kingdom. So this was a big contrast of two families. One was very traditional yeah. into Vedanta and philosophy and second was very much towards the British traditions. But I didn't see that. I, I was born quite later. But I knew my grandfather. And my grandfather used to speak about his father, that he has written so many important books on Upanishads and Vedanta, that they are now considered a very, very valuable writings. And I have also given some books in some important European libraries to be conserved. So because of these two family traditions, we used to host big musicians in our family. So the biggest name was Pandit Ravi Shankar, as you know. His elder brother, Uday Shankar, used to come to my family. And they used to stay there. He was a great dancer. So he used to stay there for two weeks, three weeks, one month. And they used to choreograph new, new dance and create new music. So this is how the music influence yes. came into my family. So when I was born, uh, music instruments were always in the, sh in, the dining, in the sitting room, in the bedroom. It was like a toy. So we started just like a kid playing on the tablas, really did not understand what it is. Mm -hmm. And my uncle and my father, they became tabla players. And then at the age of 12, we started seriously going into learning. And then when we were just playing, my, my, grand, my uncle used to say, you know what, now this is no more just playing. This is a serious thing. So you have to, if you want to learn, you, mm -hmm. you come into the tradition and learn. So this is how I started playing tabla, or rather learning tabla. I imagine the beautiful childhood and, and all the, the, that the mood, the atmosphere, the, 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 all the images from your childhood, yeah. important. The, this, those are the roots and uh, the heritage of, of what we will become. And I'm looking to you. And allow me to say, you are a beautiful, uh, um, bright, uh, profound human being. So, it's not by random that you are what you are now, from the root, from your family, from your beautiful family. So we need in this society continuities and to respect roots and transmissions. I think the oral transmission and it's uh, on, engage on this uh, topic. You know, first of all, everything in India if you see from the Vedic period, whether it is yoga, Ayurveda, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. astrology, astronomy, fighting skills, martial mm -hmm. arts, mm -hmm. music. To learn this, you have to go to a guru. Yeah. Now, going to a guru is like going to a school, going to a university. Mm -hmm. So you are different, many students. What happens that in our tradition, the guru does not teach you very easily. Mm -hmm. Guru will test your patience. This is the first thing? First thing. The guru is going to test your patience, mm -hmm. how patient you are. Can you give us an example of, of testing? Well, uh, I give you one example, very precise example. My father and my uncle's guru was late Pandit Kishan Maharaj. He is one of the greatest figures of tabla. So suppose uh, some parent would take his son or daughter to his house that guru, Guruji, would you accept to teach my son? Mm -hmm. So he would say, sure, definitely. You have to leave your son in my house, and you come next year. So what happens that you go there, you are with him in his house, like a family member. Mm -hmm. 
for about three, four months, six months, he will not talk about tabla or music. Nothing at all. And what you have to do is to go to the market, buy some vegetables, help something in the house, um, play in the garden, or do some other work, but nothing about music. So he used to avoid completely talking about music for m many months. Many months. And then you start ra raising questions, why Guruji is not teaching me anything? Yeah. And then the real test starts, you know, and then he knows this is all. He, he used to do this, many gurus, they do it. What he used to say is that, listen, I didn't see you around when I was practicing. So when you ask him, Guruji, when are we going to start the lesson? So he used to say the lesson has already started. <laughs> well, when I'm making a concert, you listen to me what I'm playing. When I'm practicing in my room, yes. come and sit and you listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea was to tell the student that teaching is not like this. Teaching is everywhere. You have to find everywhere the opportunity yeah. and you have to find the moment yes. to learn. So it's an integrative perspective, not yes. a, 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 I don't know, an analytical one from, from sequential one from here to there. Yes. You know, before I, I hardly remember how many times I sat with my, my uncle's guru, mm -hmm. hardly 10 times in my life. What the main learning was orally, mm -hmm. what they were explaining about the principles of life, the philosophical background of the music mm -hmm. and learning the repertoire is very easy. Mm -hmm. You practice six hours per day, you have the, somebody to teach you the repertoire, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But it's not about playing music, it's mm -hmm. about transmitting your emotions in a performing art. Mm -hmm. Now the whole idea is to, tradi oral tradition is to make you discover your own self. You know, Matthew, the thing is, if you have not discovered your own self, yeah. how can you express your emotions in music? So this is very important that this music brings you to the center of your existence. That this music makes you realize what are your objectives in life, purpose of your life. Yeah. Okay. okay, my purpose is to play music, but that's not only purpose. My, mm -hmm. mu my purpose is also to become intellectually more developed because we are human beings. Our mind has no boundaries. Our thinking is... No boundaries. No yes. boundaries. So we, we need this intellectual progress every time. Mm -hmm. We have to learn with the society which is around us, the mm -hmm. globalization mm -hmm. which is around us. This all affects your music. Yes. So oral tradition has been the, the only method mm -hmm. to learn our tradition. Yes, the only holistic effect method. So when you are talking about discovering yourself in order to transmit your emotions through the art, this is pure psychology, pure psychotherapy, but also pure art, but also pure science. So all together, without finding the point of splitting between them. So the philosophy of life, there, in your house, the principle of life were discussed and you're, you're there. And I was wondering now, as a child, tell me, your what two principles of life, please, Nihar? Well, my two principles of life is very, very simple, which what I got inspired from my father and from my uncle. First is honesty. Honesty. Honesty is very important. This honesty is not about I should not cheat you or cheat others. It's about honesty with your own self. With your own self. What you want to do. With your own desires? With your own desires. 
you have to be honest you know sometimes we ask questions we have to ask questions to our own self mm -hmm. and be ready to listen to that difficult answers yes so honesty in that sense that we have to be honest with ourselves mm -hmm. about what we want to do honest vis-a-vis -vis the society mm -hmm. and the second most important is hard work hard work yes and remain focused on what you have to do without uh, discipline and hard yeah. work you cannot be honest in, in a way with you yourself absolutely I think the fundamental thing is focusing on one thing in life mm -hmm. because focusing on one thing will make you discover so many other things we have sometimes I feel that we have a false notion of independence Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, many people, when they come to learn mm -hmm. tabla with me, mm -hmm. they want to say that, oh, you know, I want to be free. I want, music for me is freedom. Mm -hmm. Music is that I want to play with this person, with this mm -hmm. music, with mm -hmm. this music. Mm -hmm. And they come with a notion of freedom. But you cannot mm -hmm. express your freedom if you don't have fundamentals strong. Mm -hmm. What happens in a jungle? Freedom yes. is there. Okay. So the law I mean? of the jungle. So freedom should not become the law of jungle. Mm -hmm. Freedom is something which brings you higher to the materialistic level to understand really mm -hmm. what life is all about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, I come to oral tradition, your first question. Yeah. You know, this oral tradition, what happens is that it makes you independent mm -hmm. as a person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to analyze and to be on an autopilot of learning process. Okay. Guru is not something that you are going to be dependent on always for knowledge. Mm -hmm. The Guru's job is to make you independent, mature and intelligent. A Guru always says that knowledge is universal, knowledge is everywhere, that he is not the only source of knowledge. So a Guru always encourages the student to learn good mm -hmm. things from wherever the student can. Mm -hmm. And then says, now you have the knowledge enough mm -hmm. not everything yeah enough. but enough knowledge enough. to go out in the world make your experience and build your character the bird may fly the so this is may fly. freedom not uh, at, to attach on on a, a point exactly because yeah. you know what i am going to learn through my process of life mm -hmm. during my life what you are going to learn is not going to be the same yeah so yeah. what a guru has learned through his life experience, it's good for him. Not for, for the disciple. But might not be good for you yes. or for me. Yeah. So the fundamentals they give through mm -hmm. the oral tradition. Mm -hmm. And then we come to a second stage that we start performing with musicians. Mm -hmm. Now when you perform with musicians, you understand that every musician is different. That every musician has their own likes and dislikes and requirements mm -hmm. and you start learning how to apply the knowledge that you have learned with your guru mm -hmm. with different musicians. Now you are on the second stage of experience. After this long years of performances with musicians, you become more mature and you are a little bit different than your guru but, but you still have the flavor of your guru you know mm -hmm. so you are not going to become a copy of your maestro so this is very important that a guru when there are many students sitting in front they give the same knowledge mm -hmm. but they give individually the knowledge according to the character and the mm -hmm. temperament of the person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they have an excellent um, uh, capacity to 
read the personality of a student, you know. To feel the, the, yes. the, the energy and the, yeah. So sometimes what happens that a guru has 10 students, but they all have different mm -hmm. way of playing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you listen to them, at some point you will say, they still have some similarity which brings you to the source, that is the guru. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is what uh, uh, oral tradition is all about. We are not supposed to write anything. Not to write on an external on piece, of piece of paper, exactly. but to write, write in your memory. Yes. So oral tradition gives you a great capacity of memorizing. Mm -hmm. And because of this memorization, while we play, this sense of freedom that people f might feel comes out because mm -hmm. music. Indian music, there is a language. Mm. Tabla has a language. We don't learn rhythms or rhythmic patterns. We learn a language. Dhaga ga dhete dhete. Dhage na dhaga tin ake na. Or dha dha tete dha dha tin na. Dha dha tin na, for example. For example, if I have to play dha. Yeah. Tin na. Tete ghena. Yes. Dhage na tin. Kar dhati dha. So we are being transmitted mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. linguistic form of yes. rhythms. Each each sound it's a word similar it is, it to is a word. word. So the word words are connected in a grammar mm -hmm. in a way. So da da, it's uh, da da. It depends in which speed also you play. So yeah. what generally happens that we don't write these letters and sounds. We memorize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if uh, my guru wants to teach me one one phrase, which is constructed, let's say seven nine seven, seven nine. nine seven nine seven nine is sixteen in total. Yes. Okay. Seven nine sixteen. 16, 16 seven 16, nine sixteen. So what happens that we don't ha write the partitions one two three one two three four or one two three four yes. one two one two how, three. How can you can you be in the frame of the sixteen to know to know mentally to know where you? So are. now what happens that we analyze it later? Yeah. We memorize it first. So seven becomes dada ga dete dete. Da da ga dete dete. Da 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 ge dete dete. Seven. Da da ga dete dete. So for me, this is seven. Da da ga dete dete. Now nine. Da ge na da ge te na ki na. This is nine. Da ge na da ge te na ke na. Da ge na da ge te na ke na. Tell me the, the semantic, the, 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 the words, the sounds are not random or... Uh, no, they are not random. They are all words. That's why it's in grammar in that sense that every sound is a masculine, feminine sound. Okay, mm -hmm. masculine or feminine. So, for example, if I make you a masculine, there is always a feminine. Dha dha teta. Feminine is ta ta teta. Dha dha tinna. Feminine, ta ta oh. Okay? If I have to say, da gadana gatera ketata, ta gadana gatera ketata, becomes feminine. So when I play fast, da gadana gatera ketata, da gadana gatera ketata, da gadana gatera ketata, da gadana gatera You see, so there is always masculine feminine sounds. Always there's this dialogue, compensatory, the whole wholeness, so not yes. only masculine or feminine. Together. Together. So this makes the language of rhythms. This was seven On this basis, once you have the rhythm uh, linguistic base, yeah. the improvisation becomes very easy. easy. So now we do seven nine seven nine. 
then we do 7799 9779 9797 or 347999 433499 433499 so whole algebra mathematics can come out but you know the language is there so you don't have to think it just comes out what a beautiful structure we need structure this word means is structure the sun rises the sunset this is structure so this represents in fact the laws of the universe masculine feminine rhythm seven nine yes and secondly the when you say about universe we see rhythm in the circular circle yes okay as the sun in fact as the sun now if you if you see the the solar system everything is around yeah. moving yeah. around yes. now the moment one planet slows down or one planet goes out of the circuit it's a disaster all the system will, it's, uh, will collapse yes. right so rhythm is the same we see rhythm uh, in a circular way mm -hmm. and this is all been formed when you at a very young age you go to the guru mm -hmm. and you learn the language you enter in the rhythmic form like you do It goes in this way, all, oh, all the rhythmic circle, yes. like one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Dina, di, dina, dina, di, dina, dina, di, dina, dina, di, dina. Oh, then, then, dagatrika, dina, katta, dagatrika, dina, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. You can even do nine or eleven. One, two, three. One two three four. One two three four. One two three four. One two three. One two three. One two three four. One two three four. One two three. One two three. So with the rhythmic angle, if you are going to analyze it, you are not going to be spontaneous because you need time to analyze. That's why language is being introduced to us, that we analyze directly in language. Partitions, we don't have the time to read the partition when we play. Yeah. Okay. So again, I come to the point that oral tradition makes you independent yeah. because the moment you are going to write it down on a piece of a paper, you are dependent. You are dependent on, the, on that. You are not dependent on your memory. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, music is not about always perfection. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you write down, Making a mistake is not going to happen because everything is written down. You are just going to follow what is written. So there is no risk of making a mistake. Whereas in our music, mm -hmm. sometimes we do make mistakes because everything is in memory. Mm -hmm. On the basis of the memory, we improvise. Mm -hmm. And when you improvise, you make mistakes sometimes. But that's okay. Because if you don't make mistake, then you are a perfect person. And if you are a perfect person, then why you want to learn? The whole point is that this is a process until your life and ends ends. You keep on learning. There is no limit. I don't know. I am still learning. Okay, perfection. It's uh, quite an idealistical concept, and this it, it's equivalent with the death itself exactly. of the process. It's remarkable that you were talking about roundness, mm -hmm. solar system. My image of a partition is linear. So in the West, we are linear. Yes. And we are not round. Round, this is the main structure of the universe. Yes. This is the 12-bit cycle. Not linear. When we are linear, we are, uh, I think, in, a, in a, a, we are separate, separated ourselves from the universe, from ourselves. And the Western society 
the, the, the destructive potential of the Western society maybe is connected with the linear perspective, which is, which is not uh, in uh, the universal cycles and the universal laws. Well, in, in Indian tradition, the ancient tradition, why perfection was everything, conserving everything and perf to have perfection while you play was not the main priority. Mm -hmm. Because this music, first of all, started in sacred ceremonies. Mm -hmm. temples. This was the place where you go. Music was a way of worshipping. Worshipping, yes. Okay. Worshipping to, not just to God, it could be worshipping to your guru, worshipping mm -hmm. to the sun, mm -hmm. worshipping to the nature, wor worshipping to sound, because these sounds are representing the sounds of Shiva. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it was all basically coming from a sacred source. This language of rhythm is at least 5,000 years old. 5,000 years and old. And it is still growing repertoire. Mm -hmm. Nothing is written. Mm -hmm. So f this music was first played in temples mm -hmm. and ceremonies. Then the Maharaja time became that Maharaja used to invite musicians to play in the court. Mm -hmm. This started after the 12th century, the first Islamic invasion on north of India mm -hmm. and the Mughal dynasty came in. At that time it was a fusion of Islamic and Hindu traditions. Mm -hmm. And music became, the, for the first time, a source of entertainment. Mm. Because it was not even a source of entertainment for very few people mm. who was close to the Maharaja. Mm -hmm. So the musicians were being employed in the royal courts. They were being called to perform when there is a marriage, when there is a celebration, when there is a victory, or just if the Maharaja wants to listen to good music. So Maharaja listens to music with the court members. It could be for one hour, it could be for a whole night, it could mm -hmm. be for five minutes. Maharaja is not in mood, so he would say stop. Mm -hmm. So musicians would stop, Maharaja would go, they would go. But this was a time where great ragas were also being came into existence because of the influence, the influence. new yes. instruments came out. Mm -hmm. And then, 1947, the British left, yeah. India became a republic. There was no Maharajas, the palaces were being taken away by the state. So the musicians who were being kept by the Maharajas as salary people, who they were their children were be taken care of, they were being given money, they used to stay and work for the Maharaja. They found no work. Mm -hmm. So it was after the f 1947 that Indian musicians started coming to the West, like Ravi Shankar came. Mm -hmm. And here he saw probably that music is being played in auditoriums. Mm -hmm. And it has a duration of a certain yeah. time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this was the third phrase where Indian music became more structured in the sense of timing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now Indian music is getting a lot of influences from outside, mm -hmm. Western influences, but the pure purity of the music has been always kept mm -hmm. intact. Yeah. And it is very happy to see that new generations are coming Mm -hmm. uh, and playing this music. But again, the tradition of oral learning is still there. Because this music cannot be learned into music school or conservatories. Yeah. You have to go to your guru mm -hmm. and learn orally with 
with the guru. Independence. 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 We are seven billion people on the planet, and one may say we cannot afford seven billion independent people because otherwise will be chaos. It will be um, uh, end of quite, the world. Quite of end of the world, you know. So I don't know if this uh, I don't know kind of conspiracy theory, theory that we have to be controlled uh, in our education to be controlled to to be uh, teached to consume and to you see not not to to have our our own space not to discover ourselves what do you see in this world on this topic well, first of all, I see that there is less and less importance on culture in our yes. society. Yeah, yes. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. This is a random or this is... No, a, this a is a very, I, I think it's a very systematic... Systematic, um, yeah. Uh, systematic uh, math, uh, pattern going yeah, pattern. around. Yeah. The state is going away from the culture. Mm -hmm. State is going away from the welfare. Mm. I mean, we are going away from all the principles that our forefathers laid mm -hmm, for, for mm -hmm, a good mm -hmm, human society. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everything is based on consummation, yeah. growth. Yeah. External growth, of course. Yeah. You know, when you see on televisions that Chinese economy grew by 9% or course. European economy grew by 1%. And this is happiness, yeah. And if you, nobody talks about the welfare mm -hmm. parameter, nobody is talking about the happiness parameters, nobody is mm -hmm. talking about yeah. Yeah. the pollution parameters. We never ask the earth how many percentage of resources we have taken. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically we are we are going away from the fundamentals. Yes, and we cannot blame always the politicians and no. and the system, because as citizens we are part of the system. Ourselves, are we are the so first one to blame. So again, remain being honest is to mm -hmm. also analyze honestly mm -hmm. the problems. Mm -hmm. the s s often the problem is coming from our own selves. Yeah, often. often. Ma maybe 99% uh, <laughs> or... <laughs> you know, I, I was... I, it was not easy for me to follow what I am doing today. I, I studied in, in the college, I became a I had a diploma of commerce, I, I had a diploma of advocate, but I was not happy in what I was doing. So you, you've practiced as advocates? As At, well. uh, yeah, I did everything. Okay. At the end of the day, I was not happy in what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So when I asked this question to myself, why I'm not happy, it yeah. was that what I was doing was not yeah. giving me the satisfaction. Yes. So what was giving me the satisfaction? This was giving me the satisfaction. Mm -hmm. My growth was not so much fin he, financial growth. He, okay. But at least I'm happy in what I'm doing. And you have the courage to abandon yeah. all your uh, university investments and the Absolutely. time and so on. I, 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 I completely changed my life. At what, what point in, in your life? What age you were? I was around. 30. 30? Yeah. Okay. I was always doing music at that time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, traveling mm -hmm. taught me a lot. The interaction with different cultures. Yeah. Because it is very important to go far from your tradition also. Mm -hmm. To see your tradition from a distance and realize what is good and what is bad. This is the chance now from, uh, for you to being in France. 
Yes. And to, to see India from a, a certain distance? Certain distance. And I see very rationally what is what I feel is not good, what mm -hmm. I feel is very good. Mm -hmm. Here mm -hmm. also I see mm -hmm. that there are certain aspects of society and tradition mm -hmm. which are very good. Mm -hmm. There are certain which are not good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to find my happiness and my center, yeah. I try to take the good parts of all the cultures, you know, and all the systems. And this is very important because, mm -hmm. again, it's about independence. This is the independence that I want to preserve for myself to see what I feel mm -hmm. in my tradition or other tradition, what is good and what is bad. I don't want somebody else to tell me do this because this is good, yeah. do this, don't do this because this is bad. Mm -hmm. I want this liberty to judge myself. Mm -hmm. Now, if I am wrong, that is my responsibility. And if I am wrong, I will learn from that from mistake. That. Yes. But I, I want this intellectual freedom. Mm -hmm. I, this is what freedom for me is when we talk about freedom, mm -hmm. independence. It's your intellectual independence. Mm -hmm. Somebody can probably confine you in a room mm -hmm. that you don't have your physical independence. That can be overcome. But intellectual independence yeah. that we, we miss in this modern society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Intellectual independence have gone away. Yeah. We, we just follow what we see on Facebook, what mm -hmm. we see in the media, mm -hmm. what we read on the newspapers. Yeah. We have stopped analyzing. We have stopped asking difficult questions. Why? Why this is happening? Why violence is there? Why the degradation of nature is there? why yes. governments are not fulfilling their duties to our citizens mm -hmm. and what as mm -hmm. citizens we mm -hmm. are doing for the state yeah yes very important very important this is a guru way of teaching all that you, you said yes in order to 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 learn from life itself from different uh, different uh, aspects of the life and so on Unfortunately, we only have three minutes, and uh, I would love to, to to listen to you to to your way of, of <laughs> being uh, for many many hours. We hope the universe will allow us to meet us uh, to meet again. Thank you. And maybe maybe to to have a, a tabla piano. <laughs> for Probably why not. Thank you, Nihar Mehta. Thank you very much for, for, for your thank you. your light for thank your you. light. Thank and you. if you agree to end our program as we began mm -hmm. with the uh, beautiful tabla piece, thank you again. I will do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. you.